Hey, uh, General Organa, it's Matt Wesley. Uh, I just got your message. Listen, I'm really sorry. I don't think I can make it to freight today. Uh, I already have plans with my buddy JJ. Uh, don't worry. I'll pay you back next time. Anyway, good luck and tell Stomeroni Starke say hi. All right, see you later. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the Star Wars movies one minute at a time. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. I'm Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. And it's just us. Here we are. Just us. Much just like, like the monkeys. <laughs> like Dan Whitley's side project, it's just us. Hmm. Um, that's a deep cut. You moved it. Never mind. The, uh, for all the Dan Whitley fans out there, um, the uh, we're up to one minute, one minute, minute one forty six, one minute, minute, minute one forty six of uh, Star Wars Episode Eight, The Last Jedi. Uh, That's correct. One forty six starts with the credit for Space Laura Dern, and it ends with visual effects and animation by Industrial Lights and Magic. They did a good job. We'll have to keep an eye on them. See what they do. Hmm. I will we'll watch their career with great interest. Mm. So, um, credits. We keep moving on here. I um. So I said we we lead off with um. Space Laura Dern, mm -hmm. and I was trying to think of I'm like what have what do I know her from? I know Space I know her Laura Dern. Yeah, and then I um. So I went through and I have seen besides Star Wars Episode Eight, The Last Jedi. Um, I think I've seen. Four Laura Dern movies. You're only um, counting movies, not television, television projects. Right. I've I saw her on the um, what is that? Enlightenment. Also mm -hmm. had my friend Sarah on it, which was good. Um, and yeah. I saw her on uh, Big Little Lies, which also had. Is she my the one who Sarah kissed Ellen? Hmm? Isn't she? Is she the one who? She's related to Ellen. What'd you say? No, remember a thousand million years ago when it was a big deal when Ellen DeGeneres kissed a lady on TV? No. Uh, I think Helen, Helen, I think uh, Laura Dern might be the recipient of that or might just mm. be on the ep that episode where it happened. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Sidetrack. Anyway. I, um, Sorry, I'm Laura Dern. So what are your four? Dern, I have four. You want to guess any? No. Well, I'm going to assume Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park was one. Okay. Not I'm not um, you know, like like people a couple of years younger than me love that movie. I'm I, I haven't seen it in a while, but I remember being like, Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was it was right. Mm -hmm. Um Well <laughs> and before that, Wild at Heart. Wild at Heart Wild. came out in a time where I was renting a lot of movies. Mm. And so that was very much a uh a movie that I rented on videotape. Um Wild at Heart, Jurassic Park, Novocaine. Novocaine. Novocaine, which I recall was an, a, a fairly early date, I think, for me and my now wife. Hmm. Uh, let's see. What year was that? Novocaine. Yeah, it had to be early. Um, I'm only distantly remembering what that movie is. It was. Although, or rather, my I remember it, but just for the sake of the audience, what would you <laughs> say is the... Uh, let me let me jog your memory and say um Steve Martin. You know, I was gonna say it was Steve Martin. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, does he play a dentist? Does it maybe I'm thinking of Little Shop of Horrors, where he was treated by and he sings about a dentist. Yeah. Or he is a dentist in Little Shop of Horrors. He is a dentist in Little Shop of Horrors. Okay, Horrors. so maybe that, that's what was confusing. Yeah. But this is um say I think this was the first movie that um I want to say this is the first movie that uh, we saw after 9-11. It came out in December of 20, 2001. Okay. And it might have been a date, early date, with me and my now wife. You mean early in the evening or early in your relationship? Early in our relationship. Hmm. Um, and um, yeah, Steve Martin, Helena Bonham Carter, and Earth Laura Dern. And I do not remember her being in that Laura Dern, but... I don't remember much of the details of it. Although the, the IMDb uh, summary says the dentist finds himself a murder suspect after a sexy patient seduces him and steals all of the drugs from his practice. 
is um is, I was gonna ask another question about Laura Dern. I don't know. I've only seen her in four things. <clears throat> yeah. Uh is she is in the MCU. That was my question. Is she? That's my question to you. Is she in the MC is currently in the MCU? I do not know. No, because I don't none of these are uh Marvel movies. The fourth one is The Master. The Oh, uh, I did see the, that one. The PTA movie, which boy did I dislike that movie. The one with uh with Phil Hoffman? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I like yeah. uh Paul Thomas Anderson movies, but but boy did I hate that movie. On the balance, I'm not sure anymore. I'm sure I think at this point he has now tipped into I dislike more of his movies than I like more of his movies. Hmm. I mean I love Boogie Nights and Magnolia. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like after I, that it gets it's a little bit more spotty for me. Um trying to remember what other movies he has made. Um this is going into his, his, yeah. <laughs> I'm very didn't see Heart Eight. Uh, I saw Heart Eight. I like Boogie Nights. I like Magnolia. I like Punch Drunk Love. I like There Will Be okay. Blood a lot. Okay. I think this is where it might start to get. Well, that's didn't like The Master. Did not see Inherent Vice, Phantom Thread, or Soggy Bottom because of I didn't like The Master. So why bother? Yeah. So maybe you're right. Maybe maybe he's maybe he's uh, jumped the shark. Well, I don't know. Hmm. It I mean, just for me personally, I've been I've clearly other than the thread got the the phantom, the phantom thread got a lot of critical yeah. praise and stuff. All I can think of with that movie is the the Paul F. Tompkins tweet that uh-huh. went into a <laughs> musical collaboration. Um, I didn't know he was uh, in a really long term relationship with Maya Rudolph, and they have four kids. Wow, I did not know that either. PTA and Maya Rudolph have four kids. Hmm. Four children. Um. Anyway, uh, Earth Lord Dern, um, Frank Oz, also in this film. I'm not going to go through the Frank Oz movies I've seen. I think that would be too many. But right. um, I did, as I mentioned during that week. I remember being having it not spoiled, but I remember thinking because I saw him at the premiere before the movie came out that I thought that y- there m- Yoda might be in this movie because, hmm. um because Frank Oz was at the premiere. And I was like, well, I don't remember being at the premiere of the last one. And he was part of the family, but still. Well, um, you might be interested to know, I chose this episode to do a kind of a deep dive on Frank Oz. Oh, and Oz uh, the deep end. No, I, uh, Oz. Um, so, uh, he's British. I did not realize that he was born in mm. England, in Hertfordshire, England. And his parents were both puppeteers. Oh, um, well, Punch and Judy couple <laughs> uh did not they they didn't have any information on their um hmm. their their work um punch and judy isn't one of those things that they call it something else in in uk right oh no, like really snakes and ladders and no it's not i'm saying right it's not one of those things where it's got like a slightly different like a hokey cokey or snakes and ladders or yeah I, it's not uh, one or cluedo <laughs> cluedo um no, I don't. I'm. I. I cannot speak to that. Okay. Nor will I. <clears throat> um. So he um was apparently in a deleted scene in Superman three. three. I know we're, we're okay. always looking for pe- was people Superman. from Superman two, but apparently, uh, I think he played a doctor or something. Mm-hmm. So uh, unfortunately, I have not seen the scene, but um. Here's something fun. Uh, John Lithgow, of course, voiced Yoda in the uh, mm-hmm. the holiday, not the holiday special, the radio drama. Mm-hmm. And uh, John Lithgow would go on to star in the Dirty Rotten Scoundrels musical, which was, of course, based on a movie mm-hmm. by Frank Oz. So uh, interesting. Um, not quite a not quite a Lorenzo music situation, but it's it's it's, it's got <laughs> circular circularity to it. It's getting there. Um, he has, Frank Oz has directed two uh, Star Wars actors in other projects. Can you name them <clears throat> and their project? Well, I wasn't. Uh, uh, Darth Sidious himself in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. That's correct. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels starring Ian McDee. And Steve Martin, star of Novocaine. Is he bringing it all around? Oh, wow. Hmm. Um, and what was the other... Hmm. This one is might be a little tougher because it's a movie 
it was very it was popular when it was out but it doesn't seem like people talk about it anymore and the actor is someone who you're like oh yeah he is technically a star wars actor was it a little so, person no hmm. it's just a it woody actor. harrelson it's not well if, if it's not a little person you're woody harrelson i don't know what it is those are all my <laughs> guesses um <clears throat> Uh, Terrence Stamp, oh, Chancellor right. Valorum himself, is in the mm. movie Bowfinger mm. with Steve Martin. <laughs> with Steve Martin of Novocaine fame. See, this is the Steve Martin. Episode. Wow, this is a uh, turns oh, out. And, I hope uh, he's. I hope he survives this encounter. Oh, with a, I, we don't. Oh yeah. <clears throat> um, we, we're well, make a, uh, let's make. Yeah. Well, at the end of this, maybe for the video thing, we'll have a little <laughs> thing with the Force Ghosts of Tom Petty and Jackie Mason. <laughs> Uh, and maybe throw in Debbie Reynolds. <clears throat> Debbie Reynolds was in the movie In and Out, also directed by Frank oh, Oz. Um, I thought you meant throw Debbie Reynolds into our Force Ghost montage. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <clears throat> throw her into the Force Ghost montage. <laughs> um, so apparently, when uh, George Lucas was uh, making the, was uh, produced, starting the production of uh, Empire, mm -hmm. he of course wanted to go to the best puppeteer that anyone knew in the world. Right. And that was, of course, Jim Henson. Mm hmm. Who uh, was too busy, so he said, uh, "Get my not my my British non-union equivalent, Frank Oz, <laughs> and the rest is history." But um, it well, can I, you oh, imagine if Yoda had been voiced by Jim Henson? That's a it's it's a different kind of uh, thing to me. Well, what's the um, Rolf what's, is is the is the gravelly Jim Henson, right? Yeah, he's a dog who. Yeah, uh, well, I, he I, kinda, know, yeah. I know who Rolf is, but that's the that's the best <laughs> example of kind of like that. Like it'd probably be closer to Rolf. I'm I'm, I'm trying to pin pin pinpoint what a Jim Henson voice. Like what would it have been closest to? Right. Like it wouldn't have been that high kind of Kermit Ernie voice. It would have been like a like oh, yeah. hey, you know. Yeah, probably would have been more like that. Luminous beings are we, not this crude matter. You know, it would have been like very. Um, that's a that's a pretty good that's a pretty good Rolf doing Yoda uh, dialogue. Right. I got you know I'm working on it with my kids. I think. <laughs> <clears throat> um. Yeah, but but I also feel like Frank Oz has a as a kind of um he tends to play the more like bitterer part of the duos mm -hmm. he's in. Right. Like, you know, Jim Henson tends to be the more like the Ernie and he always right. tends to play more like the Bert. So would that would having a, a Jim Henson developed Yoda, would he would he be more like a uh hmm. like a hippie guru? You know, would he would he be the same type of character or would he be like a a different and obviously there's no we will never know the answer but um, um yeah because now i'm picturing fun, like fun to <clears throat> contemplate um like dr teeth yeah <laughs> um <clears throat> yeah that's yeah. A, like like it, it really is tough to figure out what who that would be <clears throat> But yeah, I feel like Jim Henson's uh, gurus would tend to be more like a laid back hippie vibe to it right. more so than a than a. Uh, and I wonder if that was the idea. I mean, I don't know what the, you know, Minch. Minch. It'd be interesting to read that. Kind of the way they did the. The comic of the Star Wars, you know, the original draft of that. Mm -hmm. They never did a comic of the bracket draft. Did they just do a comic of the bracket draft with that? I don't know. I want to go back and reread the actual... bracket draft with, yeah. with Jim Henson in mind as Minch Yoda. Was the bracket draft um, an actual script or was it just like an outline? Like, does it actually have dialogue and stuff in it? Um, yeah, I think didn't we? Where we were reading from it at the time, I had the whole thing oh. out there. I thought, <clears throat> unless it was, I thought it was just, was I thought it was just kind of summaries outline. of like things that happened. But uh, mm. anyway. You know what I learned? Uh, well, so this week for me, for the credits week, um, I am going to uh, go a little bit more freeform. I just scoured the internet for any possible Last Jedi trivia we might have missed in our uh, in our journey. One of the things I uh, learned mm -hmm. in my was that originally um, Rose Tico was supposed to be a much more um, like an Eeyore type character, like a very sour puss kind of. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, of course, this thing. But right. when they <clears throat> were casting people and they, they liked Kelly, Marie, ironically, they liked Kelly Marie Tran's energy so much that they said, well, you know, we got to make her more of a, of a, to reflect Kelly Marie Tran's kind of like personality or, you know, bubbliness or whatever. So, um, 
Hmm. It's interesting to think of, of what if if an Eeyore like like, like Phillips Rose from Chico. The Office. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Or I was thinking like or like it, uh, it, her as sadness in Inside Out. If if I can, yeah. <clears throat> The Pixar. Well, I was thinking more like they should get like Rachel Dratched, but like a Debbie Downer type mm. type person who's always you know bringing up the negative stuff like that. Um. Anyway, for comedy, was it more like that? Like for like, oh, that would well. It also would have been interesting seeing uh, Finn having to dealing with a person like that. How would he have? Right. How would he? Would he have been like, I gotta bolster her up and you know right. show her like would he, that have convinced him more to be on the rebellion side because by trying to convince her. It would have. Uh, who knows? Uh, so the last movie in which um, the last, uh, not even a movie, the last time Frank Oz voiced a Muppet, mm-hmm. uh, according to IMDb, was uh, the year 2000. He did a voice for the Muppet Race Mania video game. Wow. That was the last time Frank Oz, uh, at least according to the internet of DB, maybe he'd done a commercial or something since then, but um, that was the last time. Since then, it's been a bunch of different mm. uh, different people. Oh, uh, oh, no. Oh, wow. <clears throat> That's a Yoda. He's done a bunch of Yodas. Yeah. I was looking at the, the his... Um, interesting. In 2000, yeah, in... in 2001, his characters were taken over primarily, primarily by Eric Jacobson hmm. with David Rudman as Cookie Monster. With David Rudman as Cookie Monster. Well, it's interesting <laughs> that it took two, takes two men to do the work of one Frank Oz. They both, it's not like one person does all the Frank Oz uh, parts. Um, wow, that's interesting. And here's something uh, else that you might find interesting. A lot of people mistakenly think that Fozzie Bear is a sort of a tuckerization of Frank Oz, Fozzie mm-hmm. Bear. But apparently not. He was named after the Muppet Builder, uh, Foz, 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 Foz oh, yeah. Pazakis, the Muppet Builder, who <clears throat> like, presumably uh, constructed Fozzie Bear, hmm. named in his honor. So just happens to be puppeted by a guy named Frank Oz who, you know, Hmm. Do you think that's how Foz Pazakis got the jobs? Because he's like, that sounds that sound so much like Frank Oz. <laughs> that's that's ah. my Frank Oz. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this kid's great. <laughs> uh, but yes, that is all my Frank Ozmation I have right. for you this week. <clears throat> so you can Ozmania, close the plug back. Ozmania. Um, yes. Well, next up, we have, um, I think next, um, I'm writing this in order. Uh oh no wait or is that before? I don't know. Well, Nick, oh let's talk about BDT. About um, who? Benicio BDT? del Toro. Oh okay yes. Um, mm-hmm. He's another one I wrote down. I'm like, what have I seen him in? I don't think I've seen him in a lot either. And I've seen him in a, hmm. seen him in a lot more stuff. Yeah. Um, he is realize. of course in the MCU. He's the collector mm-hmm. in Guardians of the Galaxy and in, uh, in Infinity War, I think, and a couple of those. Um. He shows up in um, one of the What If episodes. Not not a spoiler. <clears throat> um, and he plays him so campy in the mm. What If thing. It's so funny. I don't know if that was. I'm telling you, I, I we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna find out he's actually not very good unless he's playing a specific type of character. And I I feel bad because I like yeah. him in those. Um, well, License to Kill. Remember, um, that's right. my Moonraker fans will remember mm-hmm. that we we discussed his appearance in that. Um, and then he was in, um, he really had a nice stretch there. He was in uh, Usual Suspects, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Snatch. Those are all things that I saw him in. The Way of the Gun, which I saw, and that, that came, kind of came and went in that post-Snatch kind of wave of like, it was like high, uh, fast-paced Brian, kind of high-energy crime movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Sin City. Oh, right. He was in that which one. I forgot about. Um, yeah. The Wolfman. Speaking of movies that I hated, so you didn't see it. I did see it. I hated it. Oh, I mean, but you didn't like it. That's what I mm. mean. You didn't think the Wolfman was Marv, did you? <laughs> um, no, Marv was from Sin City. That was the that was his previous movie. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Was um, of a different. Thing. Yeah, and then Guardians: Infinity War. So that that was that's mostly it for BDT. I haven't seen him in a lot of other stuff that he was apparently mm. good in, but. Uh, I uh, he's on that new um thing on HBO Max I think. 
Or okay. is it Netflix? Something. Where it's a know. move. One of those direct to uh, anyway. Right. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Benicio del Toro. Yeah, Penny the Bull. Um, mm-hmm. Then the uh, the part that always makes me cry. And even Literally it, cry? It was hard for me to watch it back even during this little, like, just watching the 60 seconds that I watched it. And then I went back to write, you know, like, oh, let me, let me, what was the beginning and end again? I let it play. And I was like, oh, no, yeah. wait, wait, wait. It's got to stop it. But I was so, like, in the theater, definitely teared up. And then the first, you know, like, seeing it at, at I feel like this, you know, I haven't watched this movie as many times, maybe, as some of the other ones. Because I like it, but mm-hmm. it is long. And it, it's, it's kind of. Um, it doesn't have to be. But uh, that hits me every time in loving memory of our princess, Carrie Fisher, with the little piano version of the of the Princess Leia music. And it's just like, oh, God, like I wasn't expecting it the first time. Yeah. You were already like in that post movie, like emotional swirl. And then it's just right. like, oh, the by the way. Of... Yeah. Do you think um, would it have been different if, say, if. You know, and God forbid, if like Mark Hamill had passed, if the, mm-hmm. the situations had been reversed, or do you think the fact that it's Princess Leia is—is is there something about it that's more sentimental than if it had been like Harrison Ford or or like that? I mean, like, because no one really <laughs> cared—not no one cared, but like they didn't put up a tribute to Peter Mayhew or Kenny Baker or other, you know, or or other, you know, yeah, those guys behind masks, but but um, you know. I don't know. Uh, it, that would, it, would it have made a difference? I, th- I think the fact that it's Carrie Fisher and Carrie Fisher's story is so yeah. crazy. The fact that she, you know, built this life for herself despite all the, you know, uh, ups oh. and downs. I feel Man. like that made it more. Um, it would absolutely. You know. I think with Harrison Ford, it's less like he, because he's so associated with so many other things. Yeah. But Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill are very much tied to this. And they've, you know, both had other careers, obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're very much tied to this. And yeah. and I just in my head pictured like when, you know, hopefully years and years and years forever from now, mm-hmm. when eventually years. Mark Hamill does pass away and they're gonna play the the, the little, you know, staring at the French horn music and, and oh yeah. God, I'm gonna I'm <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that will be uh that will be weird. So what else anything else in the credits? Uh, you want to dive Well, old? we have um well, let's keep an eye on um unit production manager Rom Bergman. Hmm. Because Why? You um follow his career with great interest. He's also he's been uh the producer or involved in the production of um all of Ryan Johnson's movies. Hmm. Uh, including forthcoming Knives Out 2 and Untitled Star Wars Trilogy. Wow. So he's, um, um, you know, one of Ryan's crew, it seems like. And so he's done other stuff, but that's, that's, he's, he's a kind of a go-to guy for this. So, um, I wonder if the Star Wars Trilogy will happen. I I mean, I guess just between whatever's going on with Lucasfilm, but also just the movie business in general. Right. You know. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, he's a bankable commodity right now, Ryan. So um, I don't know which is scheduled to come out first, Knives Out 2 or Untitled Star Wars Trilogy number one. But if Knives <laughs> Out 2 tanks, then that might affect Star Wars. Oh, but... he'll get he'll get Trevor Road. Hmm. Trevor Road. Trevor Road. <laughs> um, also of note, once again, this happened on Friday. No Pete's in these credits. What's going on? Hmm. This is Do you suspicious think there's an lack anti-Pete? Pete. You think there's an anti-Pete policy? Well, you know, uh, as the world grows, mm-hmm. there's going to be fewer Pete's. But I'm also, you know, it's not a, it's not a. Um, you mean proportionately there's going to be fewer? I mean, Peter's well, there's gonna a be name more... that's going to be around forever. It's not. A... Right. Yeah. Yeah. But there, there's going to be, you know, fewer uh, white guys involved in everything we see. White guy's named Pete. Does white guy doesn't have to be a uh, white guy named Pete? But yeah. I'm also including. I'm, I'm. You know, it's a global club. This inter- intercontinental yeah. union of Pete's. So it also includes, you know, Pedro's and and Pierre's and Pet. You know, uh, um, Pedro's and Petra. Hmm? Is, is there a lady version of Pete? I was trying to think of that. I don't know. Well, it's Petra. It, we'll would see. Be one. Yeah, Petra. Um. 
So we'll see. So far, Pietro. Nothing. Yeah, Pietro. Piotr. Um, <laughs> well, we'll keep um, an eye out. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll, we'll have a look. Um, other than that, uh, I think that's all we got for this round of credits. Um, okay. Alex, can you come back tomorrow? Um, I think I will. All right. As long as I can sleep here on this couch and here in the studio. Well, there's nobody else here. We can, we can, we got to, we, oh, you know what? We could even crack open the Joe Dater lounge. Or, no, who has it this year? Is it Flanagan? I think, I think it was Flanagan. Yeah. We, we, we got the keys. Yeah. We can go, we can sleep in there. We Gotta tended to, uh, sweep out all we... the Dinosaur Jr. records and the, uh, <laughs> sweeping them out. Well, he just throws them all over the floor. Like, he does. Nothing. He's a slob. <laughs> Um, I feel like we front loaded our the, the season more with um c- contenders for the the lounge. You That's true. I mean? There were a lot at the like, top. I feel like we haven't had a lounge contender like the whole second half of the movie. But that makes sense because we're lazier and we're gonna get the people we know are gonna be good and and mm. and uh, well, we so. we closed a lot of strong people too. We had a, I love the guests. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No. No. no but we'll, yeah. we'll we'll get to them. Yeah. Um. All right. Well. Um. Hopefully. Um. Everybody else, you can um, come back tomorrow. In the meantime, let's see what we're going to do. We can say, um, you know, when we're done with this, uh, we got this week. We got two episodes next week. Seven more minutes of credits. That's it. Seven minutes in credits. And then um, after that, we're going to be we're going to be gone from the regular feed for a while. So what's the best way to keep up with us? Well, I'll give you two ways. One. Support us on Patreon. It keeps the show going, and you'll get at least one episode a week, most likely two most of the time, on weekends with Star Wars Minute Weekend Edition and Week in Review. Mm-hmm. And um, it uh, it helps us. You get to hear us uh, weekly in your ears and in on your eyes, sometimes on your eyes. I don't know. but In your eyes. In your eyes and in your ears. Hey, in your eyes. <laughs> um, we'll be... In your ears, on your eyes, and up your nose with a rubber hose at StarWarsMinute.com slash Patreon. And um, also, we if have... Peter Gabriel's In Your Eyes would have been <laughs> as big of a hit if it was In Your Nose instead. Yeah. Up your nose with a rubber hose. Um, Who? Uh, <laughs> but also, don't, uh, don't forget, we have other shows that we do, so you won't hear us together. But uh, Alex and his brother Andy are doing the Godfather Minute, where they go through every minute of the Godfather movies. They're currently in the midst of, uh, maybe not even the midst, maybe the beginnings of uh, Godfather Part 2. Somewhere around minute 30 when this airs. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's maybe the, maybe the closing in on the end of the first quarter soon. Uh, uh yeah, know. although it's surprising, we're we're not even up to the we're still at Michael's communion thirty out mm. thirty minutes into the movie, and we're still in the first you know scene. Wow! So uh, it's it's a big setup. And then uh, I have a show with uh, my friends uh, Joe Mazel and John Ingle and Tom Taylor. You uh, may remember that we did all of the Devo songs in alphabetical order as ABC Devo, but now we're doing all of Star Trek the original series episodes in alphabetical order at abcdtos.com and that um that has just picked back up um or is about to time is a funny thing but uh we took a little summer break and we're coming back um with the second half of the alphabet starting with m not m there's no episode mm. just called m but was it m or l what are we oh yeah m m because we finished mm. i think with the lights of zatar we're gonna pick mm. up with m um uh, mm, that's good star trek and uh, so <laughs> set those up in your podcast finders and then uh, meet us back here tomorrow for a brand new episode of Star Wars Minute. Star Wars Minute. Star Wars Minute.